The Beer and Barbecue live stream will begin shortly. Be sure to grab a snack, a drink, kick back and relax, and we'll start soon. Starting live stream in three, two, one. Oh man, look at that. Look at that food. Oh, the beer. Oh man, I'm getting thirsty. Woo! Nelly, all right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Uh, this is Larry again, and uh, this is my fourth live stream of the year. I'm going to take these things off here. These are my new studio monitoring headphones, and there's like a two second delay and it makes me talk slower I've noticed so I will take these off I assume the sound is working uh, just give me a moment here to pull up my uh, my live chat let's see here live chat there we go hold on folks let me pop it out and turn this down here sorry for the delay here this is always a problem here so anyway welcome back uh, again this is my fourth live stream and uh probably my last one of 2018 uh, i'm getting better at these a little bit as you can see uh, the sound quality i hope is better uh, maybe the video a little bit better maybe other things better i don't know i'm learning the ropes of this studio software i got here in front of me a little bit more each time yeah all right um, oh, got a lot of welcomes from people out there. A lot of cheerses and things from those out there. Let me see here. Got to readjust the, um, I guess I can't resize this. Chat box. Well, that's interesting. Huh. That's the same problem I had last time, folks. The scroll bar is so white that I can't even see. Um, there it goes. So like the little scroll bar on the side is like a very pale gray and the uh, live chat screen is pure white. So I can't even find the thing. I mean, my eyes aren't that bad, you know, but apparently they're bad enough here. Uh, so anyway, welcome back. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot to talk about tonight. Well, I actually kind of do. I, I wanted to sample my beers and my cider. Um, I've, you know, you may have been watching my videos right this fall. I've made a Northeast or New England style IPA again, a version two of the zombie juice that I uh, originally did version one of back in the springtime, I think. And uh, I made that and I said I would do a follow-up tasting video. Time ran out, didn't have much time uh, to record, film and edit yet another video, as well as the pear cider I had made from a Brewer's Best kit. And I had the same problem. So I thought I would combine them together in a impromptu live video. I've never done a live video tasting of my own beers before. So this is a new thing I thought I'd try as well. Let's see. Oh, Chad's on the line. Hey, Chad. My my brother Chad is on here. And a bunch of other folks. How, how you all doing? Yep. Oh, calling in from Sydney, Australia even. Yeah. What time of night is that for you? <laughs> Wait a minute. It's like your daytime, isn't it? I think. I don't know. I lose track. Let's see what else we got here. A um, bunch of people calling in. Trevor, hey. How you all doing, folks? Uh, Brian at Short Circuit of Brewers is on. And uh boy, it's boy Rebecca, everyone's coming calling in. This is great. This is a great turnout. I think I need to announce these things more often, uh sooner in advance, like I did, because I posted this thing yesterday, so I had basically a 24 hours and a half, like 36 hours to advertise this thing. So 
Uh, it looks like it's working pretty well. Um, what I have here is my first one of the two that I'm going to drink tonight. This is, let me get a little closer to the screen here. This, oh, let me turn the, turn the label around. Sorry. This is my uh, pear cider. This is the Brewer's Best kit I had made. You can see it's very clear. I think I think you can see that. It's, it's very clear. Uh, it's very refreshing, very crisp. I kind of liken it to uh, more of a lager, actually. I made a, an apple cider. I made the cherry cider earlier this year, and now I've made the pear cider kit. And uh, quite frankly, I think I like the pear cider the best of the three. The apple cider was fine. The cherry cider, I love cherry cider, but it's a little bit uh, of a residual sweetness to it. This, even though I put half the flavoring packet in, if you put the whole uh, sweetener packet in, uh, it, 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 it's a sweeter cider, no packet, dry cider. My wife likes the sweet. I like the dry. We split the difference, and this is what I got. And this is one outstanding, one outstanding uh, cider. It, it really is. Oh, mm. And um, I'm definitely going to do this one again and again in the future. I love it. I, I mean, uh, I think the kit was like 40 bucks for the package at my local homebrew store. It used, uh, I think, a couple pounds of corn sugar. I, I had to buy on top of that and just mix it together. I mean, it's the same recipe I did for those other two ciders, the cherry and the apple. It's the, I did two videos, one for each of those. So if you haven't seen any of those and you want to know the process, go check out those videos. But, pardon me, this is outstanding. So I am definitely happy with the pear cider. So, um, has anyone else tried a pear cider before? I mean, I've I've drinking part uh, pear ciders uh, that are store bought ones like Crispin's uh, pear cider is probably my favorite commercial brand. But uh, I'm proud of this man. I think this knocks the socks off of that stuff. A anyway, uh, let me take a quick leak. Um, quick. Sorry, I'm starting to drool here. <laughs> A quick look at the feed here and see who's calling in here. Um, lots of people from San Francisco. Uh, people drinking uh, cream ale there. A lot of hellos. Yeah, cool. Yeah, go go grab a homebrew. That's that's what we're here for, right? And let's see here. Sound is great. Thanks, Trevor. That's what I was hoping for. I've been trying to tweak that. Uh, I started off with um, with a Bluetooth headset with a little uh, microphone piece here. And that worked okay, but uh, it would cr when I played back the stream and played it back later, I didn't like the quality. It was a little tinny. It cracked a lot. It dropped uh, on occasion. But I could hear the feedback from, from my own voice and from and everything that, that was going on. So um, if you can't see this, but I have my OBS Studio software open, and I got slider bars showing all the audio uh, levels of, of all my different scenes that I transitioned to and back and from. And uh, they look great on the screen, but then you play back later and like my intro was like super loud or super quiet or didn't play any sound at all, right? Those kind of things. So uh, not just for this purpose, but for video recording as well for my normal videos, I got a pair of these uh, studio grade um, studio monitor headphones. I think there's a Sony label on them or something here. Yeah. And these are not cheap. These were like 80 bucks, I think. Uh, but they reproduce sound very well. And so now when I record my videos uh, out in my garage and basement here or whatever, I can actually do proper sound checks uh, with my microphone and my new camera because I'm still fighting with trying to get the right balance of camera audio and, uh, uh, and uh, in input or output from the microphones. And I'm sort of clipping a little bit at times, sometimes it's too quiet, so I try to raise the volume in post-production, and then there's a lot of static and hiss. And if, and if you haven't noticed any of that, great. Uh, but I do, because I'm a, not a perfectionist, but I do like to be pretty good at this if I can in the future. So hopefully my the quality of my audio will improve now. Hopefully. Let's see here. What do we got from some folks? Uh, oh, Mike, what's going on? Everyday barbecue. Is that you? Oh, I just scrolled right past you. Darn it. I scrolled way past you, didn't I? Boy, oh boy, look at that. <laughs> Why does this do that? I touch the scroll bar and it shoots like down like three pages. So now I have to come back up to the top, scroll back down again. 
I got a question here. Uh, I just noticed really quick here, uh, just the tangent, just trying to read some of the comments so they don't get too far along. Um, question from Bayer Z28 asking, uh, wonder how Larry's tiered fly sparge, sparge setup is doing? Well, I don't do fly sparges. I always do batch sparges. I think the only fly sparges I do is basically with the grain father, right? Uh, sort of a, sort of like a restriculating kind of thing, right? Uh, uh, but other than that, I just do batch sparging. Uh, let's see here. I uh, believe I'll grab a homebrew. I saw that once. Okay, so I passed that point already. Uh, uh, from Jordan Fisher, he's saying I used, uh, that he used my uh, DI mash ton video to build his own. Uh, you're welcome. In fact, I did the, that second follow-up video with the bigger mash ton about a month or two ago because I found out that the one I used was a little small for my uh, preference and my comfort. Uh, okay, every day. There, there you go. Everyday barbecue and cuisine. Hey, welcome aboard, man. Uh, Mike's out from Rockford, so he's not too far from me. Um, so we've been talking about doing a video collaboration, possibly. Uh, he's a cooking channel. He doesn't do brewing, but uh, I do cooking too, right? So we, we're trying to figure out a time and an open slot to do a collaboration video. It's kind of similar to what I did with Paul and Mike from Home Brewing TV a couple times already, right? Uh, I think I think those are fun. Uh, so we're trying to come up with some ideas. One of the ideas that we were just talking about was uh, I did a video on fermented Tabasco sauce and he's got a really awesome Blackstone flat top griddle that he does videos and cooking videos on, especially when it comes to like breakfast foods and things, which make me drool watching him do it. So we might want to maybe kind of like, hey, you put your hot sauce in my eggs. Hey, you put your eggs in my hot sauce, whatever, you know, kind of like those old uh, peanut butter or Reese's peanut butter cup uh, ads, right? <laughs> Anyway, whatever. I, I guess I'm showing my age, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Um, so we still haven't figured anything out yet, but that's that. That's a hope and a wish that that could get done. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, so Perry, Florida, from Lester Shop Talk. All right. So hey, welcome. Uh, Kyle Hub. Yeah, Kyle's online. He's uh, he's the owner of Brewing America. If you have been seen a couple of my, or probably a few of my videos now this year where I've shown the hydrometers that his company makes. Um, hold on just a second. I got a, a box at least nearby. <laughs> I got a box here. So this is the, uh, so the brand right there, right? So thanks for that, of course. Much appreciated. It, those are awesome hydrometers and flasks. Let's see. Um, what else we got here? Um, partial brewing beers, okay, almost on secondary Friday, excellent. Because you all know what I feel about secondary fermenters, right? I've already ranted about that about a year and a half ago, so. <laughs> I just don't do it. I just never saw the point in it. It was a waste of uh, time and energy and effort and having to wash and clean and sanitize an extra vessel and then risk tainting your beer by doing it and oxy oxidating it and all that. I just, uh, I used to get off flavors in my batches of beer back in those days where I was doing that and um, I, I quit doing that and among some other changes like so about the same time and actually I've got this question before so I might just expand on it here I you know I've gotten questions from some people asking you know about the the uh, flavor of homebrew like they're like they're new at homebrewing or they have friends at homebrew and they don't understand and they don't want to hurt their feelings by saying this to, to them so I'll say it because I don't, I don't care uh, but because I had the same problem years ago is that sometimes you can tell a homebrew is a homebrew because it's got kind of like this off taste to it, they would say, right? And uh, I, and, I, and I knew what they meant because I had the problem for years back when I was doing extract brewing uh, and and I was bottling and I was doing this primary and secondary vessel stuff. I, I just did everything by the book from those, what the old homebrew uh, books and, and literature used to say. Pardon me. And about 2000... Geez, eight or nine maybe. I uh, went to all grain brewing, went from bottles to kegging, and I got rid of the primary or the secondary fermenters all about the same exact time. And my beer just went up like so much in terms of its quality and flavor and that what I call the malt extract twang and so sort of the off flavor, maybe the staley, maybe who knows what it was, went away. And I haven't had that problem since. Um, so that's that's basically what one reason why I don't do secondary fermenters too too it's like it's it's unnecessary and all that right so i like to i i like to see the end game of things um it's like when i cook i get the same 
or anything in life, basically. Um, I look at the end product. I want to make, you know, a certain dish or a certain type of food or a certain beer or wine. And the process of getting there can be fun, some aspects of it, right? But some there's always aspects of every process, like cooking and brewing and anything else that you don't like, like the cleanup. Like when you cook, you have to wash all the pans. Oh, that's the downside, right? When you're brewing, you got to sanitize everything and then and clean up everything afterwards. That's the downside, right? So if there's ways to like skip those steps and save on those steps, I'm all for it. And that's, again, why I got rid of doing the secondary thing, right? Let's see. I got a thing saying that my sound sucks. I guess, maybe. I mean, here, let's see. How's my sound now? I think it's okay. Sounds okay to me. Uh, maybe there is an issue down here with me playing it here. Maybe I'll try that. I actually had, for some reason, had it playing on a different window in the background. Maybe there was an echo or something. My sound is going in and out of it. Yeah. Uh, is it because I'm getting too close, too far? Maybe it's the streaming portion of it? Hmm. I don't know, guys. It's, it's always part of the uh, problem. How do I sound now? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let me sip a beer while you get through that. Um... The sound could be coming in and out because of the speakers here. I'm using the uh, laptop speakers. They sounded great in, when I was um, sampling this earlier, but, you know, technology is what it is. I don't know what's what, what could be causing that. Maybe I'm too far away like that. Or I'm too close like this. I'm not sure. I'll just, uh, just let me know if it happens again, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, Art Doesn't Matter says, Larry, you're awesome. Thanks for the videos and for another year. Yeah, thanks. I hope to keep it up. As, well, as as long as I physically can, um, I mean, it, it is a lot of work, especially uh, for the amount of effort I put into it. Um, a lot of people think, like I just had a discussion with my daughter earlier. <laughs> uh, I told her I, I had a live stream in a half hour, and she's like, what's the big deal, Dad? You just could, you know, record. I'm like, oh, no, it's not really, you know, there's, there's equipment set up. You got to do your sound checks, make sure things like what we're talking about with the sound coming out don't happen, and trying to get everything framed just right, and and make sure everything's working. I mean, it, 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 there's some time. So um, when it comes to doing like actual videos, not live streams, it, it's like, it's much more complicated, right? Because you, you have to plan what you're going to film, pick a day to do it, um, drop an outline, a plot uh, synapsis or something, right? A syllabus of some sort, right? And then you have to go through and uh, do all the filming and then the post-production takes the most time, you know? For, I think, every minute of video, there's probably... Uh, 10 minutes to an hour or more of back-end work uh, in post to put it all out there. Um, so it's very time-consuming. I hope to stay with it and keep up the pace, but um, I'm not sure. I've been doing this since, I think, uh, the fall of 2011 or spring of 2012 as a hobby. Uh, and it still is a hobby. Um, but uh, about two years ago, I started doing this a lot more, uh, I put a lot more effort into it. I started turning out more videos more often, putting more effort into the quality, learning along the way, right? And uh, that just adds even more time to the overall process to the point where I get a little bit burned out like every other YouTuber. I mean, that's a pretty big issue out there right now. If you follow this topic online, uh, a lot of people uh, put out YouTube videos so often, which I don't. I, I put them out when, when I can, so I don't have a regular schedule, but even then it's kind of daunting. So I hope to keep doing it. I just don't know how much longer I can. I mean, I'm, I am I actually might be be taking a job in, in the future that requires travel. I'll be on the road half my time or more. Um, so if that's the case, I won't be uh, making videos <laughs> hardly ever because the time away, um, I can't make videos. Then I come home and then I'm playing catch up from the time I was away, you know, before I go away again. And um, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen too too much, but I'm trying to. Stay on, on track here. Uh, let's see. Uh, she going on? Damn. Okay. What else we got here? Australia again. Beer drinker drinks wine. Well, yeah. I'm a beer drinker, wine wh drinker, whiskey drinker. I got 
I got wines galore. In fact, I got so much wine here coming out my butt uh, from my, my homemade wines and the uh, store-bought wines. I, I got, I mean, it's like a bunker down here. Uh, I got all kinds of whiskeys, you know. I got like ryes, right? I got uh, I got scotches, which I haven't even opened this one yet. It's, this is a new one. I mean, this is my favorite scotch, by the way, I think. And I, so, yeah, so wine, beer, whiskey, I mean, it's all homemade adult adult beverages. I haven't made whiskey yet, though. That's that, that's a challenge. I don't know if, if I want to undertake. Uh, let's see here. Uh, thrash metal home brew and barbecue. Hey, what's going on? Um, let's see. What's, oh, I got a $5 live. I got a super chat. I got a super chat. Oh, awesome. Uh, what does the live chat say? Thanks for the videos. Oh, this is from Jake Y. $5. Thanks for the videos and the awesome brewing spreadsheet. Been brewing for one year and your channel helped tremendously. That's awesome to hear. And thanks for the $5 too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Well that um, I've, I've repeated myself in the past on this topic, so I won't rehash it too too, too long. But uh, yeah, that brewing spreadsheet was something I personally did for myself years ago when I started uh, getting into all grain and I, I was tired of doing hand calcs and things. And I wanted a way to calculate my water additions, my, my points, my gravity points, for example, when I design my recipes and calculate bitterness from the hops. And, and it grew from that into what you see now through a lot of user requests uh, for me doing this YouTube channel thing as well. So, yes, yeah, so you're very welcome. It's free. If, if you don't have it and you want it, someone else, just go download it. I got it on my website and pretty much a link to it in just about every single one of my brewing videos, I think. All right, so awesome. Thanks, Jake. Um, and some more guys from Illinois. What else we got here? Um, uh, San Antonio. Yeah. So Jake says he brewed the zombie dust recipe for family Christmas gifts. Awesome. I hope you tried it first. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I'm sure it turned out fine. Right. Um, all right, guys, hold on just a minute here. It, it's getting hot in my house. I turned the heat on and I had it going on too hot. Now get a little bit warm. So, uh, all right, so who else we got here? Toronto, more Illinois folks. Boy, I got a lot of folks from Illinois, and that reminds me, I um, I never got to hosting that meet and greet. I said I would try to have this fall. It just never happened because uh, I've been, you know, I've been busy, like I was saying just a, just a short while ago. Um, I'm not sure how to do that yet, but it might have to be maybe this Christmas holiday season. Maybe between Christmas and New Year's, maybe I'll I'll pick a bar. On a, on a Tuesday afternoon because uh, in this area there's a lot of bars with like two dollar Tuesday specials so maybe I'll maybe try to plan for the day after Christmas maybe um, which I think is Monday which would well no Christmas is one ah darn it I think Christmas is Tuesday Urgh. I'll I'll think of something hopefully here uh, okay so um, again my my cider a little sip ah here's a good segue uh, from synopsis Larry are you a fan of bells uh, yes, I am, but I'm not an alkalite. You know, there's a lot of people out there who will uh, give their left testicle to get some Bell's beer. Um, I, I, in fact, Bell's was, was among the first craft beers I ever had back in the early 90s when they had, when most people probably didn't even know who they were, I was drinking their uh, Bell's Amber. It was their flagship beer at the time that, uh, that was on a few taps in Chicago where I was living at the time. And uh, I always sought it out. It was awesome. Uh, that 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 Bell's Amber and what's called Bell's Oberon now, which back then was called Sol Solson Solson, I think it was, and they had to change the name to uh, Oberon. So that got me really started down the whole craft brewing path. Uh, I've had Sam Adams also in the, in the early '90s, but um, it was fine. But it was I, yeah I, yeah. So yes, I'm a fan of Bell's, and plus the owner of Bell's is named Larry too. So right. <laughs> I've actually been to their uh, their brew pub a number of times on my way to and from Detroit over the past several years, and I stop in for a brief refresher before hitting the road again. And uh, it, if you haven't been in their brew pub, it's actually pretty impressive. Like you walk in there, and it's just a straight bar, right? And it, it, it it's not a huge place, but they have a straight bar, and but and behind the bar is just a big giant chart of all the beers they have, uh, like with placards hanging showing all the different um, uh, types of beers. And then they usually have like a handwritten chart, uh, chalkboard over here with something that, that just came out or, or some 
papers taped up showing what, what just came off, uh, just, just, got, just, just got put on tap. So yeah, yeah, I totally like uh, bells. In fact, another segue, uh, or actually the segue I was starting to get into before I sidetracked on that, I this Saturday, uh, my brother Chad's online, so he knows about this already, but this Saturday I am brewing a, a Bell's Two-Hearted beer. Uh, I, I didn't say clone because uh, it's not necessarily a clone if they give you the recipe, right? In the latest issue of Brew Your Own magazine uh, that just came a couple weeks ago, they have a whole spread on Bell's Brewery, and they have I think they had like five recipes listed in there, and Bell's Two Hearted was one. They had um, oh geez, I can't remember them all now, but. I said, I'm doing the, the uh, Too Hard to Clone because uh, about four or five years ago, I did a video. It's one of my first, it may be my actual first, homebrewing video I ever did on YouTube. Um, and I think I called it Centennial IPA at the time. I think it's called Centennial IPA. Uh, anyway, and uh, I modeled that after what I thought was a, uh, sort of a reverse engineering of it in my mind and taste of what the Bell's Too Hearted was at the time. Now, now I'm curious now. I should go back and look at that recipe, compare it to this new one that came directly from Bell's, and see what the, the differences were. But uh, I'm so excited. I've already got the ingredients. I've had them for two weeks already. I went right out and bought them the, that the very next day after getting that magazine here in the mail. So totally stoked. Going to brew a, do a, a brew day Saturday. I'm going to film it, and I am going to use the grain father. So I'm doing a five-gallon batch on the grandfather. So it's 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 grandfather season, guys. Uh, I've got to put my 10-gallon gas-powered thing against the wall, get it out of the way for the next uh, several months because it's snowed outside. It's cold. I turned off my water, put away my hoses for my water supply outside, and uh, I am going to be using the grandfather now with a twist. I am not going to be using their spreadsheet or their uh, recipe website as you may have recalled uh, some comments i made in the past was uh i don't like the recipe calculator online it's missing some very important uh bits of information in order to copy a recipe from someone else so what i'm going to do now is use my brewing spreadsheet i actually have that already filled out uh for the grandfather so i'm going to do a manual brew with the grandfather connect device i'm, I'm actually going to actually punch buttons and set things manually per my own brewing spreadsheet recipe and forego the whole Bluetooth app thing. And I'm going to give that a try. So that ought to make for an, 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 uh, an interesting video using the grandfather without their uh, app. So so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Um, let's see. Sorry, guys. I got to scroll on down here. And I got a lot of people calling in here. I gotta check the stats when this is over because I don't think I've seen this many unique names all at one time right out of the gate before. Usually people file in and they get bored and they file out. New people come in and they come out, <laughs> right? So, uh, Al, uh, cheers, Larry. You have been a great guru for my home brewing endeavors and watching from Mexicali, Baja, California. All right, awesome. Well, see, you're very welcome. Awesome, thanks for, uh, for calling in here calling in dialing in that's not even dialing in you're just logging in i i you know i'm I, i'm in my 40s i mean you know i still say things like xerox copies and things like that from like the 80s you know uh, so anyway let's see what we got here um oh homebrewing tv that must be paul i assume uh, mike might be with you i don't know but uh, no this is the pear cider that was sitting on the bar right behind the uh laptop here when when you were here for that video that we did i actually uh finally kegged it right and carbonated it so this is that pear cider uh, i was going to top it up but maybe i'll switch to the other beer in, in a few minutes here but you kind of see how clear that is it's a little flat now because it's been sitting here for several minutes now but it's a it's it's awesome it really is so i, I will get to the any ipa in just uh, well, when i'm done with this when this is dry i'll go on to the any ipa um uh chris from aurora illinois uh oh wait hold on a minute i'm sorry brought, uh, paul i didn't catch the, catch the last half it says that turned out great it did turn out great it did um it was a little different from I'll, I'll get into the details i guess when i get to the beer but it turned out a little different than i expected i'm not sure if, if i like the 
first version of my zombie Jesus or this or, or this one. I it's a toss up, I think. But I'll comment on that in just a, a little bit more here. Uh, Chris from Aurora. Hey, you're not too far away. You're probably a good uh, 45 minutes from my house in in, in, in traffic, <laughs> right? Uh, let's see. Um, Cape Cod, Washington State, all kinds of people here. Wow. All right. Well, I think I went right to the very end here. <laughs> Canadian Brewing Channel shouting my name. All right, that sounds great. Man, so many people here. I'm sorry, I'm skipping over people. I can't find that darn slider bar. And then, and, and then when I touch it, it just totally like, uh, uh, it just totally. All right, we got some uh, trolls on here, folks. So I just blocked one of them. Maybe I should skip a little bit faster down the list here, huh, guys? Uh, Anthony Sabo says he enjoys my videos of equipment reviews. Okay, all right, that's another topic I have on my little short list of things that I can talk about. Uh, thank you. Um, I wish I could. I wish I could do more. Uh, last year I, I was on a tear. I mean, I, I did a bunch of uh, fermenter reviews. I got a grain father in. Um, I'm not sure what else I did last year. And this year I haven't done that much. I uh, I, I did a that st stainless steel siphon review. Pardon me. Um, the sous vide stick thing, the cigar uh, humidor, because I like cigars, right? Uh, but nothing, I wasn't really intense. I mean, I got a, a lot of false promises from companies this year. I've been really let down, actually. Because um, I, I, I thought, well, if 2017 was a great year for doing equipment reviews, 18 would be better, but it didn't turn out to be the case. I, I've gotten all kinds of promises from not just uh, uh, brewing suppliers, but from cooking equipment suppliers i mean i got a promise from a place called kudu grill they're going to send me their bry style um grill to to uh demo and use on my videos and they just like quit returning my phone calls and things it was kind of weird they said oh it's coming and then it never came and then i couldn't get hold of them again so that was a bust i um also tried to get the new brewery plus if you guys know what that is um, there was the original brewery. It's like an all-in-one brewing system. It's like a rectangular dual sink device that you can plug in and plug water into and program it. <coughs> Pardon me. And it, um, I've been, I, I asked about that in the spring. They said, oh yeah, it might be a month or two and a month or two, then three went by, four went by. They, I call, I got a hold of them or they got back to me a few months ago or a couple of months ago and says, oh, they'll still went out, you know, this week or next week and this, and that week and that week never came and went and nothing ever came. Um, so either, you know, they either are toying with me or they have a hard time getting product out the door or something. Uh, as well as, um, and I've reached out to others. I've uh, heard no nothing back from some other companies. So I'm not doing so well. I wish I could do more this year. Maybe 2019 might, might turn around again, but I'm not sure why. I mean, I, I got 36,000 subscribers, 4.3 million views thus far. And I'm growing at about 1,500 new subscribers a month. I mean, just imagine that, right? I mean, uh, there aren't any other homebrewing channels that I'm aware of that are that are that are growing like that right now. And uh, I'm just perplexed. Maybe it's my personality. I I don't know. Maybe I'm not trying hard enough. Who knows? I mean, but I'll keep at it. I mean, I'll keep sending out requests for stuff, and we'll see. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Two Hearted hooked me on Centennial Hops. That is, well, yeah. Actually, you know what hooked me on Centennial Hops was Three Floyd's Alpha King. Uh, that's what got me into Centennial Hops. And that was, well, I don't know how long, that was like 15 years ago. And Alpha King isn't just made with Centennial. It's made with, like th I think, three hops. I think Chinook, uh, Centennial, and something else. A Warrior, maybe, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but that piqued my interest. And yes, so when I started drinking Bell's Two Hearted, yes, that's how I knew uh, what, 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 Onto itself, what Centennial hops can do to a beer, and I've and I've been using it a lot in a lot, a lot of my recipes over the years. So I totally agree. Um, you know, too hard to clone in the keys right now. Good. Was it the one from the BYO magazine? Because I mean, you know, just curious because that's the one I'm doing this Saturday. Uh, let's see. Um, my storage rack. Brian commented on my storage rack. Yeah, I, I posted a picture on Facebook and uh, Instagram recently. Uh, just a day or two ago, I think it was. I actually got tired. Now, I, I don't want to go back too far, but I finally realized that I 
have no, well, I've known for, for years I had no space for, for home brewing, um, a home brewing room or corner or space or anything. Everything I brewed with had to go back on shelves and different parts of the house and garage and attic and basement. And I had to dig everything out up and down stairs through, you know, look for everything. Every time I wanted to brew something, it was a huge pain in the butt. So I had, uh, so, um, I guess, I, I don't know, I would call it fortunately because it's not fortunate. I mean, we ran out of space in our house. I mean, our kids are growing older. We got more stuff over the years. Uh, we started this house and back in 2000 and thought we'd move out in five years. It's now it's been almost 19 years that, that we've been here and we're busting at the seams here. So I finally said, that's it. The garage is now uh, an extra room. <laughs> so I put flooring in it. If you remember seeing some of that black hard rubber matting, I put heat in the garage, TV, uh, like, a, like a nice uh, workbench table area. And I've been throwing homebrewing stuff out there too. But uh, then I just recently said, you know what? I'm, I'm not doing this right. So I went out and got these carts with the wheels and now I got everything stacked up under. So now when I brew, I can just wheel both these carts out. One holding the mash tun, one holding the, the hot liquor tank and position them any way around the kettle I want rather than putting them on one long bench table. Um, so I have a lot more flexibility Then everything will go back on the cart and slide back into the corner again. And hopefully my back will appreciate it more and things. Right. So, yeah, so that was definitely, and, and they were on sale at like home Depot online. They were like 30% off the other day. So I said, I'll buy two. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Um, my video about using the pond pump to cool down the wort was genius. Now I'm not the first one to think of that. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was important to me. You're saving so much more time now cooling my work down the pitching temperatures. Yeah, well, that's that would certainly definitely be true if you're in a warmer climate and your groundwater isn't that cold. I had a couple reasons for that, right? I think I might have mentioned that in that video or two. Uh, it was uh, one, it was the middle of winter time, and I wanted to brew, and I got tired of draining my water down the driveway because in the winter time it's going to freeze, and I have a sheet of ice on my uh, steeply sloped driveway. And I couldn't have that. So I said, well, I can't drain the cooling water. Uh, I don't have a drain in the garage. I, I had to collect it. Well, that's going to be buckets upon buckets upon buckets of water. So I said, well, let's save all the water too. You know, my water bill, we get charged basically twice in, in Chicagoland for water. Uh, we get charged twice, once for the water in and once for the water out in terms of sewer. So uh, whether or not you consume it or not or, or flush it down the toilet, whatever, it doesn't matter. They still charge you twice. So it's uh, water is not that cheap here. So uh, so those are my two reasons. One, I, I wanted to brew in, in the winter time without making a mess, and I wanted to save on some water. My my groundwater is actually pretty cold. It's like fifty degrees basically, and almost all the time. So that's not a reason why. I, oh, and also I think I also did that because at the time I was making a lager. I was making a Vienna lager in that video I did on it, and I wanted to chill the work down to like fifty degrees, and I can never get that with even my groundwater. It would take forever. So. Three reasons why I did that, and three good reasons. So yeah, so uh, so thank you for watching, and I'm glad it worked out for you. Let's see, waiting for the zombie juice. Okay, all right, hold on, guys. Okay, hold on here. Got another swig or two here. Um, Joel's going back to work. All right, Joel, take it easy. Thanks for calling in. Uh, 114 people is what Brian said earlier. Now that was earlier. That was like 10 minutes ago. So so let's see if there's any more. Uh, you have a grandfather jarhead. Excellent. Well, yeah, it's 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 a great little device actually. Um, it really is. Uh, I kind of uh, wish it could uh, put some more uh, heat out a little quicker. That's the only downside with the U.S. version. Uh, it's it takes about forty five minutes to an hour to heat up a batch of water. Uh, so that's but if you plan right, you could be letting the water heat while you crush your grains or preparing something else or whatever i mean at, as long as you work smart it's not a big deal let's see what else we got here what's the backstory with, with the knife on the wall oh ha! oh this one yeah uh this well it was a gift actually um if you haven't noticed yet uh in the background of my um garage i have a lot of stickers and i'm a huge second amendment rights activist here so i get like gifts from the nra for example for my support and contributions to things and this is just one of those things they, they give you for throwing them some money 
Um, I didn't really earn this. I actually had to pay for it, basically, by donating money to the cause, basically. So, yeah, so that's what it is. It's, I mean, it's, you know, it's just uh, de decoration mainly. Let's see, put that back up there without cutting myself. There you go. All right. All right. Back to the video. Uh, let's see. Uh, like this chat so cool. Hey, well, thanks, Dwayne. Much appreciated. From Boise, Idaho. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I actually watch, I mean, I don't know much about Idaho, uh, really, because I've never physically been there, but I've been watching. There's some other YouTubers that I watch out there called the uh, Foucha Manic Off Grid family. It's a family, a guy uh, and his wife, and I think three kids. And they actually built, and I, I've been watching them for like four years now, and they actually went out there, bought a plot of land on the side of a hill, uh, and actually built their own house from timber they milled on the property. Uh, it was, and they still make videos. It's just amazing. So I always wanted to go out there and check out their house, but I'm sure they're not sharing their address with everyone, right? Because, you know, the uh, privacy concerns and all. Um, vanilla Porter. I've never done a, a vanilla Porter. It's a. I always say I want to brew these kind of, um, not, it's not exotic beer, but off the cuff beers, like, Vanilla porters. I had a guy, uh, a neighbor, make a, a chocolate cherry or something stout the other day, uh, honey chocolate stout or something. It was good for like a pint or two. And actually, I think I had two or three pints actually. It, so it was really good. But um, for me to make five or ten gallons of it, I'd be the only one drinking it. My my family, you know, friends, over they're not big on specialty beers. They want something that's more mainstream. And actually, I kind of agree a little bit because I like to drink beer. I, if I have something that's really heavy and, and full of flavor like that, I may not. I drink it as much and it will sit in the keg longer and then I don't have space in my fridge for my next keg, you know, so I want to kind of keep things moving a little bit. But if I do, um, I've been thinking about doing and bottling, not kegging, a, uh, a sort of a bourbon maple uh, stout or something, you know, recently. I've been thinking about doing that. In fact, that was going to be my next beer, actually, until I got the be uh, the, the Brew Your Own Magazine article about the, the uh, Bell's recipes. <laughs> So, uh, so I still may get to that this winter because then I can bottle that and let it sort of age for a few months uh, here in the basement and not occupy uh, keg space. Uh, on your rotary phone watching, huh? <laughs> on your rotary phone, what? Brian, I thought you were high tech, man. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I know what you mean. I, I used to have a rotary phone, right? I mean, if you're under, if you're probably over the age of, I don't know, 40 or maybe your late 30, you probably know what that is. But the younger people, you know, they're so spoiled with the cell phones and stuff now. But I, I remember my my phone number, my home phone number had a zero in it, right? And see, so they go all the way around and back around the side. Yeah, and it was just like, calling home was like, I got to call home, you know? Uh, let's see. Uh, someone's asking, uh, oh, David Gardner here. David, Larry is the best you inspired me to build a brew house bar in my shed. Ha, ha, ha. Where it continues, it's coming along. If you ever get down by St. Louis, look me up. Okay, well, that's awesome. I, I go to St. Louis once in a while. I like going down there. Uh, I used to go down there with the kids and stuff to, to go to Grant's Farm and the City Museum and the zoo and stuff. You know, I really like that place, those, those places down there. When our kids were younger, I haven't been there in a while now, though, but, you know. I'll find some excuse to go down here. In fact, one of the jobs I'm actually uh, interviewing for right now actually is headquartered in, in uh, Maryland Heights, Missouri, which is a suburb, right? Uh, let's see. Um, what spreadsheet and program do I use for water adjustments? Uh, this is from Jarhead Cycle. I uh, Actually, I don't have any water adjustment uh, spreadsheets. I never had to use them. I, I use one of the advantages, and there aren't a whole lot, in my opinion, of living around Chicago, honestly. Uh, is um, is the fact that the water is like Lake Michigan water. It's pretty good general all around brewing water. I've never made any adjustments. I remember. I mean, I, I used to early on when I was told to in the recipe add gypsum or something. Like that. I didn't know what I was doing. That's what the recipe called for. Uh, now I just don't bother, and my beers turn out fine. Um, but if I move out of this area, I'm definitely going to get back uh, get into that for sure because uh, you know water is an important part of the beer, right? And and then oh. The shed uh, comment again. Uh, did you make that because of the shirt that I'm wearing, or because you were actually David going to actually do this anyway? This this shirt here is actually um, a shirt from a, um, a, a poker club that I'm basically in. That we play every just about every Friday night, 
and the guy converted his shed into a poker den. <laughs> Got two TVs, a, a little bar, uh, music, uh, power, ran out there, everything, you know, poker tables, the heat, I mean, so, uh, so we play out there every Friday night, so that's what this is from. I didn't know if that's what you were hinting at or not. Um, the grandfather, yeah, the grandfather is great. It runs off the of 120. Uh, the the 120 in the U.S. Yeah, uh, if you are in a, a other, in, in I think Japan also is 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 120, but most of the rest of the world is is on 240 or 220 or whatever, right? And that's uh, the better model for heating. Uh, and the delayed heating, yeah, that's another thing. I, I would fill it up the night before, and let it heat up in the morning uh, with a programmable like delay where it would come on at like six in the morning and be ready to go by eight or something right let's see somebody's punching and see here where are we at here folks i just scroll right past a bunch of your stuff here again i just touch the mouse and boom it's gone water okay yes why are water costs are so high i think i explained that just about five minutes ago i hope and while i'm talking here let me finish this up Oh man, I was talking too much. That was really refreshing. All right, uh, the keg and the tap are right behind me here. So I'm going to go ahead and get a sample. If you guys want to follow me, you're welcome. Let's see. All right, let's go down here. Actually, I can't, my, my tap is the pear cider. The actual. Any IPA is actually in a picnic tap. So, unfortunately, this is how it is until I get a bigger house. If ever, right? So, I don't know if you can see this being poured. Oh, man, does it look good, though. Nice color, nice, just the right amount of carbonation. All right, this goes back underneath. Close the door. Come back around. Sorry if you guys hear a lot of noise from me moving this uh, thing around, but I was trying not to lose you off camera here, folks. All right, let me get back on the chair. Make sure everything's back in line again. <laughs> okay, I think that's close enough, right? Let's see if I can see myself in, in the preview window. Perfect, all right then. So this is my zombie juice number two that I brewed with Paul and Mike from Home Brewing TV. If you haven't seen their channel, go check them out. I have them uh, as a featured channel on my YouTube homepage. So if, if you can't find them, which you probably should be able to, but if you can't, I have a link there for you. But this here is, well, it's a little bit, a little bit uh, moist. This is the New England IPA. And it's very refreshing, very fruity. Uh, to me, I taste a lot of apricot in it, I think is what that is, which is not quite the same balance as I had on the Zombie Dust number one. Uh, the first one I did months ago, I had only two types of hops in there. I had, I think it was Citra and Mosaic, I think, I think. And that was outstanding, um, right? Pardon me. So I thought I'd add a third note, and I was going to add Galaxy, since everyone seems to think uh, or say that Galaxies, Mosaic, and Citra are a great trio. Pardon me, it's a really gassy. Hmm. Um, that uh, I went out looking for it, but the, the homebrew shop only, they didn't have it, and I substituted El Dorado hops. Never used El Dorado hops before, but I gave it a shot, so I used Mosaic, Citra, and El, El Dorado, and um, it's very good. It, it truly is. Um, we this beer not because of the recipe design because but because of the brew day we had it finished a little thinner than i had designed the recipe to finish at um i had a problem with my propane tank or hose or something or, or my or my batch not heating up well enough I, uh and also i think we over over sparged the uh the grain and got too much liquid or wort into the kettle it was, it was really watered down and because we we're farting around and having a good time talking, right? Uh, smoking cigars, eating barbecue, uh, brewing beer and all that stuff, right? Talking about YouTube and our channels and things and just all that stuff. We just got sidetracked. And we ended up um, having to boil it even uh, another hour or half hour longer than I wanted to, I think it was. And it still didn't get the gravity down all the way to the original amount. But time was short and the day was long. 
already, and we just call it quits. So, so the beer is a little thinner. Uh, if you go back to that uh, brew video, I actually posted the recipe sheet there again um, and, um, after the fact, and you can see for yourself. I can't remember what the, the uh, numbers are, but they are a little bit thinner. So, so the beer is not as viscous and uh, dexterous as I guess as it, as I plan it to be. But the flavor from the hops is there, and that's what I wanted the most of all, right? Um, outstanding. Now, which one do I like better? I can't really say uh, because I don't have them both side by side to like try them. But if I had to go by memory, I think my first version was better, the, the zombie juice number one. Uh, I'd probably go back to that recipe and and as a, as a as a base for number three version um, and and go from there rather than uh, use number two. And make a third version from that. So just if, in case you were wondering, I think that's generally what I'll probably do next time is go back to my first version, tweak it again, uh, and come up with a third version based upon the first version. So, ah, yeah, all right. Uh, let's see. Gotta run. See you, Rob. Pure living for life. <laughs> hey, hold on here. There's a lot of stuff in here, guys. I'm talking too much, and I'm missing all your conversations here. Hmm. Okay, uh, I'm being asked about a sour. Well, if if you want a sour by a guy named Larry, Bell's has uh, their uh, special edition Larry's latest beer this past spring. I don't know if they if they still sell it, but they call it Larry's latest. So he comes up with these different batches every so often, and that batch was a sour. So I don't do sours. I've never done a sour. Well, not intentionally, right? I mean, sometimes you get a tainted batch, and it's like, ooh, it's a, this is sour, <laughs> right? But uh, not what you expected. Um, I'm I'm a little standoffish, again, for a couple of reasons about doing sours. Two, again, like I said before, for those specialty beers, I'd be the only one probably drinking it. Uh, two is I'm a little bit paranoid about sanitation because stuff gets in and doesn't leave, right? Your equipment, your room. Uh, I mean, for example, I um, you know I make bread, right? My, I make my own bread. I have my own sourdough starter. And even when I was doing that, I was really apprehensive about getting into sourdough bread because it might taint my home brewing uh, hobby. Because I brewed in the kitchen where I where I cooked, and uh, so I'm, I, I mean, I could be as paranoid, but I'm just kind of if I had a different space and a different set of equipment to brew on, maybe. I, I would do it, but uh, I, I I think I'm happy just skipping it for 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 at least for now. Um, let's see. All right, guys, let me scroll down here. Let me get a sip while I scroll. Um, Citra. Boy, you guys are sure talking a bunch, aren't you? Wow. All right, I'm well, down at the list down at the very bottom here. So I'm sorry if if I skipped some of you along the way. Uh, I kept just skipping. I just the mouse is flaky again or whatever. But if you want my attention, uh, you can try doing one of those super chats like uh, I think Jake had done earlier, and that will definitely get my attention and my appreciation as well. So, um, oh, look at some more comments. How many batches do you have in fermenting at any given time? Depends on what you mean by batches. I mean, I got wine going, uh, I got beer going, um, ciders now going. I, I got meads once once in a blue moon going. Uh, but if you mean beer, um, I usually just only do have one at a time because my my kegerator that you just saw if you, uh, just a short while ago it only has uh, one tap and barely enough room for two corny kegs in it. So uh, as soon as I can get one in, um, I have to wait a while before or drink a, a lot really fast or bring it to a party in order to free up a space for another batch of beer. So I only get around to brewing once every couple of months, honestly, a month and a half at, uh, at the soonest. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody's, oh, punching a phone number. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I think that was my old number back back in the day. Wow, geez, memories. <laughs> sure was, I think it was. Anyway. Um, now, let's see, what else did I skip here? So going about the future here now, um, I'll get to the question in just a minute, Bear. Uh, let's see, the future might hold, oh, 
I got some more mugs still available. Um, these mugs here, if you guys want one still, I have probably a half dozen left to sell, I think, in a box somewhere. So if you want one, again, uh, reach out to me uh, through my contact form on my website, and I'll get back to you with like a quote. Uh, send me your uh, your shipping address and everything so I can get an, actu an, uh, an accurate shipping estimate also out to you. Because uh, it's not cheap to send mugs. I mean, it, just for example, I think it was $8 to, to ship one down to St. Louis. And um, I think one one fan in uh, Nova Scotia, Halifax, Nova Scotia, I think, in Canada uh, wanted one. And, and these things aren't that expensive, but the shipping cost, it was like $35, $40. Bucks. <laughs> it's insane. So depending on where you live, that's going to vary uh, widely. So if you want one, just send me that information through that contact form on my website, all right? Um, what do I use for t uh, temperature control? Uh, well, um, nature, I suppose. Uh, I'm, I'm in my basement, and uh, for the for better or for worse, it's great for fermenting beer, but not great for hanging out down here, right? It's, it's, uh, it's a little cool sometimes, especially in the winter. Uh, it's probably anywhere between in the low 60s to upper 60s here all the time. Uh, and to me, that's perfect for ales. So I just put my beer down in the corner on the floor, right down here on the floor, left to right of me, whatever. And it just sits and, and it turns out fine. Um, if, it, if I want it to be warmer, what, uh, like, like I did for a Hypervisen I made this past summer for uh, Shane uh, Cates, the auction winner that I, was, that I had mentioned earlier in the year. I actually had brought it upstairs at, to about 72 degrees and to bring out some of the banana flavors, I think it was, in the uh, Hypervisen, and that turned out awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. So that's my temperature control. I just move it to different parts of the house. Let's see. Uh, boy, oh boy, I wish I could make this. There it goes. Finally made it longer. Uh, yeah, so that's how I do it. Uh, I don't have a fridge for it. I actually have one, two, three, four fridges and a freezer. And believe it or not, I, I can't ferment in, or, or lager any of them. I, I got like a kegerator that's always busy. I have like a dorm fridge, which is all kind of cluttered and waste of space. There's only enough room for, for some soft drinks. I got that new air fridge I did that video on last year or early in the year, this year. Um, that thing can hold a, like a three-gallon keg, but I couldn't get my five in there, I don't think. And uh, my freezers, it's a stand-up freezer. I got frozen foods in it. So anyway, it's just its just like I got all these all these refrigerators and freezers in here, and none, none of them are capable of, of actually uh, lagering or, uh, a beer or anything. Um, all right, see, uh, see you guys. Uh, oh, Canadian Bruins leaving. See you guys. Um, asking questions about good places to go uh, when, when you come back to, to Chicago. I quit. You know, honestly, I don't like going into the city anymore. I mean, I just, I mean, the crime, uh, the cost. I mean, I went uh, I, I went into the city this summer with the wife and kids because uh, he thought it was kind of interesting that kids see what, what it's like in the city. So we went down there and walked around. I mean, the cost was astronomical just to, just to visit. I mean, the parking was like 50 bucks. Um, food, not just the food prices, but the food taxes. I mean, Chicago charges an amusement tax, you know, for things and all kinds of ridiculous surcharges for crap. I just hate it. I hate it. And it stinks. It smells down there. Uh, I don't, I, I'm going on a rant now. I just don't get me started on Chicago <laughs> because I used to live in the city years ago and I actually liked a lot of it, but I also, I didn't like it. And that's why I left. Um, uh, okay, what else we got here? Any tips on cold crashing? I don't, uh, honestly, I don't think I ever have ever done what people would traditionally think of cold crashing. I never saw the necessity of it. And, and actually, I, I was just reading an article recently from that, from philosophy.com. I'm sure you, a lot of you guys know what that is, uh, where they did some experiment and they saw no difference, I think, in cold crashing versus not. And I haven't, I mean, the only cold crashing I get is when I put the beer in my keg and put it in the, in the kegerator. <laughs> That's it. It goes from the carboy to the keg to the fridge. And uh, the first, I think the first pint or so is a little bit cloudy after about a week of it um, carbonating. And beyond that, it's fine. Uh, church from Australia. Oh, man. 
you're, I think you're, I think you're the third or fourth one here on uh, that said you're from Australia, Charm Brewing. Yes, I get a lot of uh, fans from down under there, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure how or why. I always perplexed by it. If I look at my uh, top five countries on my YouTube analytics, Australia has never fallen off the top five, which I which I found amazing because because you guys are so far away. Uh, but uh, I guess we have a lot in common that way, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, how do I feel about brewing the bag? Well, I think it's awesome um, for small batches. I mean, I, I did a small batch brewing the bag video back in March with that sous vide stick, and it was awesome. I thought it was great for doing experimental brews. Um, maybe a five gallon batch might be okay, but honestly, you get above that, and now you're getting, and now you're looking into like such large kettles and bags and hoists from your ceiling to lift the bags up and, and down. I don't know if you're saving any effort and uh, money and time from just uh traditionally using like a mash ton or something but um you know but it's a, ch a cheap way to get started all you need is a very large kettle and a in a mesh bag basically and a, and a heat source um the, the problem though is that you need a much bigger kettle proportionally for a brew in a bag than you do if you don't have a brew in the bag because you're putting the grains and the liquid all together and it's going to eat up i mean it, it's like those people who put a turkey in a deep fryer that's overfilled and then the, in the in the oil comes up over the top and flames to take off and then they have to call the fire department right you know because they didn't estimate the extra volume the turkey was, was was going to eat up inside the kettle uh so you just got to be aware of that so you, you need a an, like a larger kettle than you would otherwise so saving on costs may not be a big reason why you do it but there's nothing wrong with it i, I mean i've done it and that beer turned out great i think it was my zaka ale I had made and it was it was delicious. Uh, so I have no problems with it. It's just um, there's, there's pros and cons to every method, and you pick what just works best for you. Um, oh, uh, Brian here says you need the Green Father Conical and Glycol Chiller. Uh, you know what? I do agree, and I've been talking to them since the springtime. About this is another company now, right? Um, I still have hope that they'll send me one. Uh, the other companies I mentioned before, I think they're just inking my chain, but I, I really do think the grandfather, uh, the folks there actually do want to send me one. The problem is, is that, uh, from what I was told by them, the first version of the glycol chiller device they made, uh, they discovered some flaws and problems with it and took it off the market, I think they said. And they're slowly introducing the revised design into the world market, but not the U.S. market yet, from what they told me. And when it becomes available in the U.S., then I can get one. <laughs> so I was told by the end of this year, which is approaching. So hopefully, the, the beginning of this coming, uh, this coming 2019 year, I'll probably hopefully be able to get one of those to use with the grandfather. I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, Brulosophy. Yeah, I saw the comment about the Brulosophy spheres or their experiments taking your fear away. That's a great website. I mean, I've never talked to these guys. You know, I don't have any association with them. But uh, I think we're, we're a lot of the same mindset with a lot of this stuff. I mean, I'm glad they do those experiments. I don't have the facilities or interest or what. Well, I have an interest. I'm curious, right? But I don't have the space and extra equipment required to, to, do, to, do, to do different tests and stuff. I just, but I like watching their stuff because they do it for me. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, that's great. That's great information, you know. And I think it's awesome. So I do really like their their uh, website. If, if if you don't know what it is, look it up. It's called Brewlosophy. B R U L O S P P H O. -S 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 whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, when is my wine video coming out? Well, hold on a minute. I have it all recorded, and I have the the wine bottled. In fact, I have them all right here next to me. <laughs> my 2018 Washington Merlot. You've got 24 bottles right here off to the side. Uh, bulk aging right now. So the question is, when do I do a video, right? Because Merlot has to should age at least two years, sometimes three years for it to fully mature. I'm not going to wait three years to do a video on something that I've been recording for the past two months. Now... So I have material as to how I made it. So I might just put that video out about the wine kit and the process and what I thought of it up to that point. And maybe in six months or a year, maybe I'll open a bottle and do another follow-up video. But uh, I haven't got around to edit because I've been busy, right? Um, I haven't even been able to do these videos on these beers yet. I've been wanting to do. I just had to 
kick the can down the road and do this live stream instead. Uh, what I wanted to do was actually use some new editing software. Uh, I use Cyberlink Power Director to edit my videos nowadays. I've gone through a bunch of different video editors over the past several years. I mean, won't, they would piss me off one after the other. And uh, now Cyberlink Power Director is freaking me to death here now too. So I've been looking at other options, low cost options. I'm not buying Adobe Premiere. Don't sell me on that crap because I'm not paying 600 bucks a year in like rent rental fees per year just to use software for a for a fun hobby of doing videos, right? So what I actually got my hands on is Adobe, uh, not Adobe, uh, DaVinci da Resolve, which is a studio grade video editor like Adobe Premiere, but it's free. Can you believe it? It's free. They, I, I think they make their money off of the uh, hardware they want to sell along with it, like the little different control boards and things that plug into it and things like that for like studios. But they offer the software for free. So I have it. I've dabbled with it a little bit, but I want to use that wine video, all that raw footage to try to learn and cut my teeth on this new video editor. So I will probably be spending a lot of time off this month because it's like late December. I got all this time off that I have to burn or I'll lose it before Christmas or after Christmas. So I might spend some time poking with that. I might get a video out maybe in January, I'm hoping. Um, let's see. Uh, lots of, so, okay, so you guys are talking amongst yourselves there about, about brewing, awesome, <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, so again, another question about the zombie juice, like I talked about earlier, it's, it's good, it's decent, good beer. Um, I would make some tweaks to it still. Uh, again, and I mentioned this before, I would go back to my first version of the, of the zombie juice and tweak that, or just to rebrew it because I think that was pretty damn good back then, right? Um, so, but this was a good attempt. I was trying to experiment, do something new. It tastes good. I mean, it it still got some aroma to it. It still got that fruity flavor, but just wasn't as intense as that first brew I made. Uh, she. Um, boy, you guys are really talking about a lot of stuff here. All right, so now, um, for 2019, uh, what, what's coming? I don't know. I, I haven't thought about 2019 yet. Um, I, I had all those aspirations. It, if you go, which I haven't either, but if you were to go back and look at my first live stream of 2018, I think back in January, I was really excited about a lot of things I wanted to do this year, and I never got to hardly any of them. Uh, one of them was having a 360 uh, filming environment, right? That was one of my like lofty aspirations. That's never going to happen. I mean, the cost and complexity of doing all that and the video quality that comes with it. I don't like this. It just, just doesn't look that great. And I don't see a whole lot of use for it. I mean, those might be good for like live brew days maybe, but I don't even do live brew, live stream brew days because, I mean, six, seven, eight hours of, of watching me stand around and watching the wall, the, like the work boil, you know, it, it, it just, to me sounds boring. So I'm going to, I just dumped that idea for, at least for now. Um, I'm not sure what else I was going to do this year, but uh, it, this, this, the, this year just flew by and now it's, it's almost the end of the year already. Uh, I'm just amazed how fast this year went. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Simcoe. Yeah, you know, I, I used Simcoe, I think, in that, as well, I I used it, I think I used it this year, actually. I think I used it in the Azaka Pale Ale, or did I use it, or, I'm, I think I used it sometime this year. I can't remember what it tastes like, because I think I blended it with an, another hop or two. So that's, that's something else that I wanted to do, is get more acquainted with the different, um, hot profiles unto themselves, right? Because you know, like a lot of people, when they start brewing, and I still have this habit, I'll, I'll, I'll find a recipe that someone else did and either reproduce it or tweak it and make my own version of it. But they usually have multiple hops, additions and things of different hop varieties. And I just go with it. And it all tastes great and dandy. And I've only done a few brews that are single hop brews. I mean, there's, I did a Centennial brew. I did my citra brew with that zombie dust clone. Mm. Uh, there might be a third one out there. But uh, Simcoe would be one to try too. I just There's just so much that can be done with this hobby that it's hard to decide what, what to do next. 
Oh, Brian, great, great timing. Uh, short circuit of brewers, collab with short circuit of brewers. That's on my list, dude. Right there. On my little cheat sheet of things to like, to, to talk about future collaborations. Um, so that's something else that I want to do in 2019 is collab with Brian. Um, I think I said that for this year, but it didn't, it hasn't worked out. But uh, maybe 2019, once his house is in order and his, and his brewery is ready, <laughs> that he's been working frantically on in his house, he gutted his basement and uh, and has been building his own brewery down there. You can go back and watch his videos on his channel on it. It's actually pretty cool to see. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's not me doing it because that's a lot of work, but... Uh, but that, that, that was a huge reason why we didn't get together this year. But we, we'll try to do it in, two, in 2019. Uh, try to get together with Brian. And, and maybe some more other, and some other YouTubers. Um, I don't know of any around my area. That's the only problem. Um, it's the only problem, right? You have a job. You have a family. You have a, you have a, you have a, whole, you have a whole different life. Like a whole life that you, that, that you got to like do as well as this hobby. And... Uh, and you know, as anyone who's got lots of things to do, it's like hobbies are hard to find time for. And then you have a hobby on top of hobby, YouTube on top of the brewing or the cooking, or and I have other hobbies, you know, as well that I can barely find time for. So I get the same problem as everyone else does. It's just not enough time for everything that you want to do. So now you got to prioritize everything. Um, cook some venison using beer. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, I haven't cooked venison in a couple years yeah, I think about that I got a couple venison videos on my channel I did I've done several years back but uh, not 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 with beer just just the uh, meat um. <laughs> all right so um, I've also gotten questions on meat uh, Trevor just put a comment down there um, I made mostly mead some beers in Michigan I haven't done mead in a while. I've been asked that question too. If I'm going to do some meads, I actually have a couple of meads still actually in my fridge off camera here from like I think two years ago, and they just sit there because you know um, it, if you've never had mead before, you either like it or you don't. It's a, it's like a hit and miss kind of thing. I kind of like it because it's different. It kind of I mean I like to make them dry, not not sweet. So I, I like to ferment them all the way out, nice and dry, just like just like I like my ciders and other things, right? And like my wines. But, um, so they're almost like a fine white wine at first, but then you start tasting the honey and a little bit of, a, you know, whatever flower that the bees had been dancing in and pollinating or getting the, like the pollen out of. Um, and that starts to like, so you either like it or you don't. I don't mind it. I think it's great for, a, oh, I, so I make a, like a small one gallon batch at a time. I make up, it makes about a half dozen 16 ounce bottles or something like that, right? It's fine. But uh, I've just, I uh, haven't been into it for a couple of years because I'm the only one that ever gets to drink it because my wife won't drink them. Uh, friends, they'll come and they'll try it and, oh, this is good. <laughs> you know, so, so whatever. Um, Pesky Brewer says you can't find anyone to collaborate either. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, it's just how it is. How it is. Uh, bourbon is better for deer meat. Oh. All right. Well, I got bourbon here, too. So, you know, we can do that. <laughs> uh, but I like bourbon in my sauces. I like, you know, my, my barbecue sauces, for example, and stuff. I, I, I like to put bourbon in those. Uh, lamb and dark beer are good. All right. Some of you are leaving. See ya. All right, well, time's running down. I got this much left of my beer and about 15 minutes left on my uh, time. I'm out of topics. I'm out of questions. So is there anything specific that you want answered? Like now, you better get it in that list and start typing because I'm going to be otherwise getting off a little bit early here tonight. Maybe I'll plan a live stream for uh, early in the beginning of the year, maybe like, mid to late January or something. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so um, M Matthew H. Is, is, a, is a new brewer. I've got a lot of comments like this from a lot of people, too. You know, I, I don't really know exactly who my uh, who my audience is from, from start to finish, but I know there's a lot of newbies here. 
or newcomers who are just getting into the hobby. I got people who've been doing it a long time um, as well on here as as I know. So trying to put out content that appeals to everyone is kind of difficult, right? I mean, you're trying to make everyone happy, and then you make no one happy, right? So I'm trying to uh, think about how to, you know, sh should I break some videos down for like big be beginner level things, and uh, and then do fun videos like fun brew day videos for the fun of it? Is it more of a social aspect for the advanced? Because you advanced brewers who who uh, who watch me probably you know like like you're not watching to learn how to brew, you're watching for some other reason. Maybe it's entertainment, whatever, right? So I've been trying to make more of my videos more entertaining as best I can with uh, film editing or maybe cut scenes at the end of the videos, maybe try to find some humor in there now and then. So it's not so dry. I, I've looked back at some of my older videos and they're pretty dry, right? Uh, I mean, they're very informative, very instructional, but not but not very uh, entertaining. That's what this medium is, video. It's, it's entertainment, mostly. I mean, if, if you want to learn how to do something, you can read a book. But you watch the videos because you don't either don't like to read or or you like the aspect of uh, the the entertainment side of it as well as the ed educational side, I guess, right? Um, how feasible is it to grow peppers indoors? Well, um, it's feasible. I got a friend of mine um, who's doing it right now in his garage. Uh, he's growing habaneros and they're really doing well as, as long as you have heat and uh, sunlight exposure or grow lights. I have grow lights myself in my garage, but I don't grow peppers. Um, I grow herbs. So I have like rosemary, basil, thyme, things like that. Because I always like the fresh herbs rather than, than the dry herbs. So I, I, I keep them alive throughout the winter. But I have a friend who does peppers indoors. Will hops grow in our area? Uh, well, at least around here they, they do, but I don't grow any hops because I've been here almost 19 years, and I thought I was going to leave here like 15 years ago. <laughs> so I just never, year after year, oh, I'm moving pretty soon. There's no point in planting hops, but in hindsight, I should have probably. Hmm. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see, Ken's writing in there. He jumped into all grain brewing because of me. Yeah, well, no, so, well, that's what I did, that all grain basics video series thing I did uh, a few years ago because – I was realizing that all the fears and doubts and uncertainties that I had getting into all grain brewing had not really been covered in all that great of a detail up to that point on 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 YouTube or anywhere. Even the home brewing books, in my opinion, in the past were kind of not overly complex, but they kind of made it seem like it was overly overly complex until you did it and got the hang of it, and then realized all oh, the books are just no problem. I, I just didn't. Uh, I was I was I was fearful, uh, fud, fear, uncertainty, and doubt is the term fud, right? And uh, once you break through that barrier, uh, it's it's easy. You're like, wow, that that wasn't as bad as I thought, right? And uh, so yeah, so I did that video series to help people get started, and it seemed to have helped because it's still my second most popular video after three or four years now. The most popular one being that barbecue beans video. I, <laughs> I can't believe that that thing is still super popular. Anyway, um, let's see. Newbies for bad. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, yeah, great. You guys are getting a lot of experience here. I mean, I, I've been brewing for probably 18 or more years now, but honestly, I haven't made as many beers as you might think. I mean, like I said before, I, if I make a beer every two months, that's six beers a year times 18 years was six 18 times six was that 108 18 yeah okay well, anyway um so it's a lot of beer for sure but it's not like a thousand it's not 500 right i just uh I, I do it as a hobby uh with other hobbies i like to cook too i cook way more often than i brew i have other hobbies i do less than brewing you know i mean i can barely find time to go to the rifle range for example Let's see. Um, uh, <laughs> how do I stay married and brew all grain? Because your wife already hates that you spend three hours brewing extract kits. <laughs> Go out to the garage. Don't do it in the house. Because if you occupy the kitchen, then the wife gets angry. Because, you know, you're in her way a lot of times when they're trying to make a lunch or dinner or something, right? Uh, plus the smells. I mean, at least my wife and others I've talked to, they don't like the smell of 
beer boiling or wort boiling in, in the pot in the house. So you go out in the garage and they don't mind. You get the picture out of the house and out of their hair. So fine, right? <laughs> Let's see. Um, do I grow the Simon and Garfunkel herbs? Next question. Uh, let's see. <laughs> hey, so, Jason, so your wife works on Saturdays from 9 to 4. It's a great, yeah. It's about what my brew day is, too. I mean, I, I no matter what I try to do, it's like, it's like okay, I'm going to get up Saturday morning. I'm going to wake up when I wake up, make some coffee, make some breakfast, right? And then I usually get out to the garage around 8.30. And uh, if I was smart, the night before, I would have already had stuff already pulled out, washed and cleaned and ready to go. Uh, but sometimes I'm busy with other things and don't do it the Saturday morning. But then, you know, so I start brewing around 8.39 and I'm maybe done by 3 or something. It's like, it's like wow, that was a long day. But um, it's a, it's all hurry up and wait, right? You do this, do that, now wait. Do this, do that, now wait. And uh, and then the cleanup. I mean, that was just the brew day. Then the cleanup goes up for like another day and a half because I got to clean everything, let the grains in the mash tun cool down so I can dump them. And then... Uh, wash all the hoses and equipment and let it drip dry for the next day and a half out in my garage. So I got equipment just dangling, hanging anywhere that's just been washed and drying. And and probably like a day later, I'm putting stuff away finally. That's just how this hobby is. Um, let's see what we got here. Brewers. Um, yeah, my favorite hops to dry hop with. I don't really have a favorite. Uh, when I first started brewing, I was really in a cascade because that was the hot hop back in the early 2000s. Cascade was all the rage. You know how everyone today is all about citra, 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 or pick your new varietal, right? Ooh. Back then, it was like you had Centennial, Cascade, Chinook, Galena, Mount Hood, Fuggles, those kind of, you know, Willamette, those kind of things. And uh, they a, a lot. They weren't that much different from another. I mean, the Cascade was like a breakthrough. That was like, oh, this there's like the citrus uh, flair to it. Wow, well, you know. So I brewed a lot of pale ales with with uh, Cascade back in those days. But now Cascade, I, I haven't brewed a, a, a beer with Cascade in probably a decade or more, uh, right? So it's just how it is. Uh, so I don't have a favorite yet, but I I just like the smell of hops in general. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Brewing is 80% cleaning. Right, exactly. Brewing is 80% cleaning, which is why I don't brew for a living. Right? I don't, because uh, you're just a glorified janitor <laughs> in those brew pubs, you know. There's this poor guy I know who works in a brew pub uh, close to my house. Um, for a long time, I felt bad for the guy because he was there all the time. Every, it, it didn't matter if I was in there for lunch or for dinner or a weekend or a weekday. He was in, he was in there. And, of course, what he's doing, he got the gloves, he's scrubbing, washing, whatever, right? He, I mean, like the brewing is only such a small part of, like, a natural brewer's day um, for, like, a small brew pub, at least, because there's only one person usually doing it all. Uh, I have no interest in doing that. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I don't like clean crap. <laughs> Let's see. Um. Worry about old ingredients, old old extract. Well, that's true. Just you know, grain can get old, hops can get old. It's it, it, that's it, that's the reality. Have I made flavored beers with other flavors? Well, uh, well, flavored beers. Years ago, I tried to make a lemon coriander beer. That didn't turn out so well. But that was back when I was still learning a lot, right? Um, but every year, usually, I make a batch or two of my Lear Garden, which is my whole garden clone. Uh, you know, it's got like orange peel, cr crockle orange peels. Sometimes I'll throw some sweet orange peel in there and some coriander and some coriander tea. I don't coriander, chamomile tea actually in there uh, as a little extra. Uh, I don't do a lot of flavored beers in that regard, although I don't mind trying them. Like I said about an hour ago, I just don't like making large batches of them because I don't, I don't know if I'll like them. This is why the small batch stuff is really cool. Like the small batch, ruin the bag idea. I, I just thought, because I can make small batches of beer and try them out and not have such a huge investment in like money and, and beer to drink if, if I don't like it. And I think doing that, I could probably do a little, exp uh, a little experimenting with that, but just not much time. I mean, I can really find time to brew the beers I like to brew already. That I, that I already know that I like to brew. And then to do experimental batches is kind of one of those, uh, it's on my wish list. 
um, a very skillful janitor. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't mean to like downplay the the uh, career, uh, but that's all. That's but for people who don't know, that's really what it mostly is is cleaning. I just to let you know. You know. Let's see. Uh, so anyway, um, it's almost time to wrap it up, guys. Um, I'm gonna finish this up here. If there's anything else you want to enter in, get it in there right now, because when this is gone, I'm going to say thanks for calling in and, and let you all go, all right? Oh, that that is still a good beer. Don't get me wrong. This is obviously juice number two. It is is decent. It's definitely worth a try. But um, if you want my honest opinion on this, I think I would do, I would stick with my first version. Uh, I liked it better. Not that this is bad. I just like the first version better. Hmm. Do I worry about diacetyl or diacetyl? I don't know. I heard somebody pronounce it diacetyl. I always pronounce it diacetyl when I make an ale. Uh, yes, I do all the time. That's why I, I let my beers sit for, for two weeks in in the primary or in the fermenter. That's one of the other advantages um, of not going to a secondary fermenter, for those who don't know this yet. It, but there's been a lot of experiments and people have been testing this, including myself. When I quit... Um, I guess, I guess I mean, the, there's a lot of pros to not using a secondary fermenter, but the one for me in, in, in regards to this topic of, of, of the, the uh, diacetyl is that the yeast reabsorb a lot of that diacetyl flavor or precursors to, to that flavor if you let it, the beer sit on the yeast longer. So what I do is that I'll let it, my beer ferment out that first week, a week to 10 days or so, I, or sooner. I mean, sometimes I get beer that's bone dry in like three or four days. It just depends. But usually that first week from, from my schedule, the way I brew with, with yeast starters, they have a good, fast fer fermentation in them. I'm usually done by the end of that first week with like fermentation com completely. And the second week, I just, let, I just let it sit in the fermenter while the yeast do their work from the bottom of the fermenter and suck all that bad stuff back out again, I guess. And uh, that's what the advan one advantage of that as well, of, of not doing the racking thing is, is as well, is that it, it just cleans up the flavors. And I'm no scientist. Well, I guess I kind of have the background the education of a scientist, just not the uh, pedigree. But that's what I've experienced too. I, I don't have any diacetyl flavors. Um, I used to get kind of those kind of flavors back when I was racking the secondaries and stuff. But... Um, I, I can't say for certain that that was the fix, but I don't have it today. Uh, let's see. Um, how many five-gallon batches have I had to dump? I think two. Two. Oh, ever. One was, um, I think, in, well, I think both were infected. Because um, one was uh, well, so long ago, I can't go into details, but I think I think it was two. It may have just been one. But you learn your lesson because you get really upset. And you're like, oh, that was a waste of a time and a day and money, and, you know. But but you learn and you move on and try not to do it again. Um, my thoughts on stainless versus plastic fermenters? I prefer glass. <laughs> you know, I, I went through all those fermenters last year, uh, plastic and stainless steel and everything, right, and and uh, all my videos and stuff. And... Now, all I've used this year, I, well, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I did use my Fermentosaurus, I think, earlier this year. But I, I have been using my glass carboys. I've gone back to my carboys. Um, I think they're easier to maintain, easier to clean, um, not so complicated, not so many nooks and crannies to clean and wash and disassemble and reassemble. And uh, I'm not a fan of plastic for fermenting. I'm not uh, nothing wrong with, with like stainless steel. I just don't like all the other gadgets and gizmos that usually come with them uh right and I, and I also got to carry my fermenters in from the house from the garage into my basement so i can't have one of those big thin walled stainless steel fermenters with those little tiny handles you have to have a way to have to, to carry this thing all the way down the stairs and the carboys with the little brew handle or brew hauler strap perfect so uh that's so i've gone back to using carboys uh my process to fill uh, bottles from kegs. Uh, well, official not me, but officially, I think the best way is to use a counter pressure bottle filler that kind of keeps oxygen oxygen away from the beer when it's filling. 
personally, me, if I'm going to bottle beer, it means I'm going to be drinking it that night, usually. So, like, for example, I got a growler like this here, right? And I got other ones like this. Uh, here we go, like these. And uh, I just use my, my tap faucet. I got a little nozzle that comes off. I did a video of this intertap faucet back in the summer or spring. You uh, put this uh, growler nozzle on that fits a half inch hose that you screw the hose up to. And, oh, 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 that, that's obscene. Uh, anyway. Um, and then that goes down into the bottom of the growler. So when you open the tap handle, it just fills from the bottom of the growler up and there's less foaming. And then I, and I cap the growler and uh, I'll bring it to parties or poker games or friends' houses, whatever, and we drink it live there. Um, this is my cigar box Easter plate. Yeah, uh, my cigar box Easter plate thing is over here off to the side. It's behind some glasses. I don't feel like digging it out, but yeah, it it's, it still works great. It's a little touchy. It's a little sensitive uh, with with the dial to to keep the uh, little stir bar uh, spinning and not getting thrown off the center of the plate. Uh, sometimes it's no problem. Sometimes it, you, you gotta fiddle with it, but it, it it works it works well enough for me. Um. Uh, goodbye, buttery popcorn flavor. Yep, you betcha. Uh, Stay the steel brew tech buckets, and was wondering if I'd seen improvements in the mm, versus. Um. Again, I I don't have much to. I mean, I've I've already done those videos for the stainless steel conical and the and the uh, plastic conicals. I mean, they both have their pros and cons to them. But again, in in, in my personal opinion, both styles had cons. That outweighed the pros that the carboys, the glass carboys I use now, uh, didn't have, and I just happy with that now. So, and unless I get a new type of fermenter from a company who wants me to try one, um, I'll, I'll try them. Uh, but uh, I'm not have no interest in going out and buying any. I think carboys are, are all you need personally, uh, unless I'm proven wrong by a product that a company might want to send my way to try. Hint, hint. Any, anyone? <laughs> anyway. Um, my opinions on the claw hammer brewing system kit. You mean like the brew system? Well, I, you know, I watched their videos. I, you know, I, I'm a subscriber to them. I sent them some emails and I never got any responses back from them. Um, it looks like a decent enough system, I guess. I, I'd never seen one up close and I never watched a full length brew day video for it. But it looks a lot like uh, like the Robo Brew or the Grainfather in a lot of ways. I, I mean, but it, it's a it's a brew in a bag system. It's a, it's it's a little different, I guess. But um, it, it'll make beer. I mean, people have them. <laughs> they they use them. I, I just don't have you know, any personal hands on experience with them. All right, guys. Um, people are heading out. Th thanks, Kyle. See y'all. Um, whole melon hops. Uh, the, I actually did a video. A blonde ale with whole melon hops about three or four years ago. I liked them. Just little hints of strawberry or whole melon, I guess, and a little bit of like cantaloupe. They're okay, but not as much of a hype as you think they are. Like the flavor is barely there, but it's a flavor. It's fine. Um, I would use them again, but if I had other hops available, I might choose the other hops. Uh, so I don't know if that's a mixed signal or not, but it's worth trying. If you have them, use them. Um, all right, folks. I use mostly liquid yeast. Uh, I have had for all these years always and only used liquid yeast. The, the past year, I've been using more of the dry yeasts, and honestly, they've worked very well. Uh, I don't have to even make yeast starters unless I'm doing a 10 gallon batch or, or I just use two, two packets, you know. And those worked out really good. Um, however, there's a limited variety of them when compared to liquids. There's so many different varieties of yeast flavors out there with the liquids that if you're looking for a specific profile or traditional style you may have to go with the liquids but if you're just having fun and you want something easy to brew with and and you want to be able just to pull a packet out of the fridge tear off the top and throw it in dry yeast are great all right guys um it's after nine i'll let you all go got a little bit of a sip here but i'm going to pound this as i hang up and uh thanks for calling in uh, and thanks for hanging out and commenting, man. This has been fun. Maybe I'll do it again sooner than I thought, but maybe sometime in January. All right. Cheers. See y'all. <sighs> Turn this off here. <laughs> oh, still going. <laughs>